Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, and in this video, I want to show you how to install the WP Statistics plugin so you can get some website statistics right in your website dashboard. Now, the reason you may want to do this is if you don't have a Google Analytics account and you don't want to make one, you can still get stats using this plugin. Or if you have a Google Analytics account but you don't always want to log in, you just want to be in your WordPress admin and see stats right there where you are, this makes it a little more convenient to do that. These statistics may vary a little bit from the ones in Google Analytics just because they're tracked a little differently. And with Google Analytics, you can filter out data. With this plugin, you can also filter out data. So if those filter settings are a little bit different, you will see inconsistencies in the data. So if you do see that, don't freak out. It's probably just a matter of the filters and the settings of the plugin and your analytics account. So here we are in the WordPress dashboard. We're going to install this plugin and activate it. And I'll show you a little bit around the plugin. There's a lot of settings, we're not going to cover all of them, but we're going to install it and start collecting some data. So the first thing you have to do is hover over plugins on the left and then click on add new. In the search box, type in WP statistics plugin and then hit enter. And this is one of the few plugins where it shows up on the right hand side. Usually when you have the exact plugin name, it shows up on the left, but this one shows up on the right. Anyway, this is the one you want right here. Click on install now, then click on activate plugin. And what happens is it adds an option at the very bottom of the menu list on the left called statistics. And if we click on that link, it takes us to the statistics dashboard where as you can see, it immediately starts tracking data. And so this one visit is me, it tracks real time stats. So it will tell you people who are currently on your website in the admin area and on the public facing side. So it immediately tracks something because you'll be in your admin area. Then over a few days, you'll start to see more data. You'll see which search engines are referring traffic to you and this fancy graph, just to visualize that number. It will show you recent visitors. It will show you the top 10 browsers. It'll show you visitors that came today, top 10 referring sites. And you can customize these by dragging and dropping them to move them around. So if you hover over the title of one of these boxes, you have this four-way arrow that appears. If you click and hold and drag it around, you can move these items and configure it however you want it to be configured. And inside the settings, actually before we go to settings, there's also a widget added to your dashboard. So if we go back to the WordPress dashboard, it will be automatically added at the bottom. So here's an item called Quick Stats. And this is the WP Stats plugin widget that lives on your dashboard. And so you can click and drag this to the very top if you want it at the very top. If you don't see this widget, scroll to the very top of the page, click on screen options, and make sure that we can find it in here. The quick stats option is checked. And that is the meta box for those or for the, the statistics widget. And as you can see, there's a bunch of others that were added but aren't checked. So you could add a top 10 browsers widget, top 10 countries, today's visitors. You can read through these, I'm not gonna read them all out to you, but you can add a whole bunch of widgets to your dashboard that pull data from the WP Statistics plugin, which is pretty cool. And if we go to the settings, for the most part, you don't have to change any of the settings. But if we have our statistics and then click on settings, we can check out a few of them. As I said, the default settings are great, so if you don't, need any advanced stuff and you don't know what you're doing, just don't touch the settings. And if you do want to go in here and research them a bit, they all have very good descriptions. So you should be able to figure out what they're doing and what they're talking about just by reading the description. But some of the important ones are the notifications. So you enter an email address, it auto fills the one that you have inside of your general settings. And what you want to have, where you check these boxes, if you want to have reports sent to you, so if you have a report whenever the browse cap any file is updated, that's, a, um, that's the file used to capture which browsers are on your site. Send a report when the GOIP database is updated, so when a visitor from, from anywhere in the world comes and updates the, their location in the database. And the pruning one, the, these top three are kind of irrelevant. The, the biggest one I think is the upgrade one. So you send a report whenever that plugin is updated, just in case it's updated without your knowledge. 
and updating plugins can in rare cases break your website. So whenever there's an update made, you want to know so you can go check your website to see if everything's still working. So I usually have this one checked and I have statistical reporting checked and this sends you a report of the data. You can set, you can choose how often it should be sent. I usually do once a week because I don't want an email every single day from this thing. You can choose the send method which is email. You can add some stuff in the body of the report. We're using these short codes down here. What I often do, I just copy and paste all of these and then put them in and I recommend you do the same. And then when you get the report you can see what data is filled in for all of these and you can fine tune it to whatever your needs are. And then when you're all done, you click on update and that will save all of those settings. And then for the, uh, the dashboard overview, you can activate and deactivate widgets. You can choose to either deactivate or activate the widget that's found on the post and page editor. You can have, there's some settings about the maps and here's some settings about the widget contents. So whenever you, there's a widget uh, for the plugin that you find on your website, you can just define what the contents are here. And one of the most important ones, you can go through all of these there. Like I said, the defaults are great. If you want to know more about the plugin, I encourage you to read through these, but you don't have to change anything about them. But on the maintenance tab, something that's very important, I think, is this option here, purge data older than. It's set by default to 365 days. Don't make it any more. You want to make sure that you have this data purged from your site so it doesn't bulk up your database. So I usually keep it at 365 if the websites aren't too busy, but if you have a very high traffic website, you might want to consider changing this to 90 days or even 60 days because all of your historical data is also in Google Analytics, which I encourage you to have implemented as well on your website. This is just so you have some data on your website whenever you log in. So I encourage you if you have a high traffic website, don't let this number be too big, the number of days, because that will really bulk up your database. And then that's really the, the biggest change on this page. And you can click on update if you decide to change that. If you want to keep it at 365, there's nothing to change. And then when you remove the plugin in the removal tab here, when you uninstall the plugin for whatever reason, all the data stays in the database unless you check this remove box and then click on update and then it removes all the data. So the reason they do that is if, if you decide to reinstall the plugin later on, you still have some data there and you still have all your settings set the way they were. And the reason you want to delete it is because it bulks up your database. So if you remove the plugin, you probably don't want it anymore. So why keep all the data? So if you decide to remove it, check this box first, click on update, then it takes all the data out of the database and it really slims down your database because these statistics plugins, they put a lot of information into your database. And that's really all there is to this plugin. And you can see the data in your dashboard. You can see them in the statistics overview and these different page report options here on the left-hand side menu. And you can even see them on posts and pages. So I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Alpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out WPLearningLab.com where I write about WordPress every single day. Talk to you soon.